What's up guys, Hope he's over here, and I'm going to review episode 8 of Ruby Volume 9. The last episode was absolutely amazing, so um, let's check out this one. The episode begins with Ruby running away. Why is she using her semblance like the previous episode? I have no idea. Little starts to asking why Ruby yelled at everyone from the previous episode, obviously. And it was only for Ruby to reply with that why is Little still there? Why is she still with her? Ruby even tells Little that um, they're gonna end up dead if they keep following Ruby. And Ruby insists of splitting away from Little by commanding them to uh, run away and just let them go. As Ruby continues through the forest, she ends up at this mansion, which is definitely not Neo's mansion. I mean, come on, it's pink. It, it could be literally anyone else. Y yeah, no, it's, it's Neo. When Ruby enters the mansion, she ends up seeing these paintings that um, resemble uh, Neo's story from uh, her past, from her childhood, all the way until she ended up meeting Cinder. And I don't know why, it just shows her in front of a throne and whatnot. To be honest, I, I just wish this painting would have been just her, like, l like um, betraying Neo from the uh, the ending of Volume 8. I thought, I think that could have been a nice detail. So anyway, Ruby ends up in front of the painting where Roman and Neo are, and Roman ends up coming alive. Which is a neat comeback for Roman, if I must say so. However, this is only the beginning of Neo's tricks. Neo made a bunch of illusions of the past characters that died from all throughout the series of Ruby into one big table to, um, congratulate Ruby. <laughs> and Culver is here for, uh, some reason. This could have been any other character like Watts. Yes, I know he's a villain and the theme here is, well, Ruby's allies from back then. But he also got betrayed by Cinder just like Neo did, so wouldn't he be fitting if he were to at least be in this scene? Anyways, Ruby gets pissed off and Roman, or I guess Neo in this context considering that these are her illusions, doesn't want Ruby dead. She wants her torn apart and wiped from existence. Neo dashes at Ruby from behind. Ruby shoots at Neo. Only for Neo to completely evade the attack and Roman shooting her <laughs> point blank. Then the scene cuts to the rest of Team Ruby, including Jean looking for Ruby. Ruby rose specifically to uh, clear up confusion. Then they hear gunshots from the mansion. Then we cut back to Ruby as she's getting attacked by Neo's illusions. And Ruby is being manipulated as of the course of this fight. When Ruby attacks Osman from the absolute beating she got, the illusion immediately turns to Oscar. Then when Ruby passes out to the floor, Neo just gives the tea to Ruby. The tea being made up of these tree leaves so that um, it wipes Ruby from existence or reincarnates her, I don't know. It, it, this whole thing has been a little bit confusing to me. But I do see other people that explain this better than I can, so um... I guess it's skill issue for me. Then the Curious Cat saves Ruby, is what I would say if they didn't try to take her body. Then Little bites the Curious Cat's tail to save Ruby. But Little gets swung away and Neo dashes to the Curious Cat. And by Neo, I mean the illusion. Because it turns out to be that when they uh, got killed. So the real Neo just pushes the cat out of the way. And even ends up killing Little. Which is ironic, considering what Ruby said earlier. Then the rest of Team Ruby, including Jean, uh, sees Ruby on the floor, and she ends up drinking the tea. Now, Neo has nothing left to do. All she wanted to do was... get rid of Ruby. Then the episode ends with the Curious Cat taking over Neo's body and leaving the mansion. This was a very impactful episode in terms of the plot. The absolute insanity in this episode was really amazing, especially when it really had this dark and intense tone. So it leaves the question, what are they going to do without Ruby? 
Well, I think that's going to be obvious, considering that John might actually lead the team until Ruby might end up appearing in an episode later. Ruby coming back is, well, pretty obvious, considering that this show is named after her. Seriously, why is Clover here? Ruby had nothing to do with his death. And as I said before, when, you know, Ruby goes in the mansion and I mentioned the paintings, I just wish it was fleshed out maybe a little bit more to really just show the overall story of Neo from her childhood all the way until um, now, obviously. And we're most likely not going to see Neo's backstory considering that it's in a book called Roman's Holiday and it literally only focused on Neo. It's like writing a book about a Taco Bell employee and then you just focus on the customer currently taking a sh**. But I'm not going to count the book for its score, considering that it's pretty much irrelevant in this situation. It's its own thing, so yeah. This was kind of a difficult thing to give it a score, so um, I think it'd be fair if I just give it an 8 out of 10. Plus, this is reaching more than 6 minutes, and it's longer than my episode 5 and 6 review. Which is shocking, really, considering I, you know, reviewed two episodes. I'm OP Silver, and signing off.